am I the asshole for telling my brother he's wrong to blame his ex-wife without any evidence simply because he doesn't want to consider other possibilities. My brother has a seven-year-old with his ex. They divorced two years ago and my brother is now remarried. My brother and his ex share custody of their son. My sister-in-law has been in their lives for 18 months and living with them for 10 months. In March, my nephew had to draw his family for school. He drew his mom, his maternal grandparents, my brother and me, my husband and our daughter. He did not draw sister-in-law. My brother and sister-in-law quizzed him on this and he said that sister-in-law isn't his family, so he didn't draw her. They told him that was wrong and that sister-in-law is his family. She's his bonus mommy and he has two moms now and not just one. That's the problem. I can guarantee you that's the fucking problem. He does not need another mom. He has one. His mother is involved in all aspects of his life. He does not need to be thinking about you have two moms now instead of just one. Why can't she not just be the woman that my dad married until he is comfortable enough to give her a position in his life? That's the fucking problem right now. My nephew told them no and ran to his room crying. He didn't change the drawing or add my sister-in-law to it. My brother immediately blamed his ex for this. He decided there was no way my nephew could just not like sister-in-law or not be close enough to her yet to count her. It had to be his ex. So that means she wasn't around much before you guys got married. That means your seven-year-old son has not had time to get to come to terms with the fact that there is another woman in his dad's life. Okay. Oh, fucking K. Thank you for telling us exactly what the problem is. This led to my brother starting a fight with his ex and filing for full custody, but they never made it to court because his reasoning was weak. My brother and sister-in-law decided my nephew needed counseling and they got him in after a month. And after one or two sessions, Mother's Day came and went. And then there was another incident because my nephew didn't call sister-in-law on Mother's Day or make her anything. This was also my nephew's mom's fault, according to my brother. Does the bitch have any fucking kids? Because if she doesn't, why the fuck would he acknowledge her as a mom on Mother's Day? One, he's fucking seven. Two, his mother is alive and clearly he was with her. Why would he think about somebody else? Be fucking for real. Your brother needs to touch grass for real. For real. Your brother will be back in about 11 years and your brother's not going to have any contact with his 18-year-old son because he spent the last 11 years forcing him to accept this woman as his bonus mommy when he didn't want that. Then last week, my brother spoke to the counselor my nephew sees, and she told him she didn't believe his ex was involved in this. He dismissed her opinion and came to vent to me. He basically shut out what the counselor said because he wants to believe his ex is to blame. I told him he's wrong to blame his ex without any proof, and he should be open to other possibilities for why my nephew feels the way he does. He told me that I'm stupid and naive if I think it's not his ex. He explained how amazing sister-in-law is and how it can't be her fault. I never claimed that it was. He asked what kind of sister I am to side with his ex over him. Am I the asshole? No, you're not the asshole. And your brother knows that you're not the asshole. And that's why he's so fucking upset. He is looking for someone to give him the answer that he wants so he can justify it. When he knows in reality, the reason his boy does not like his wife is because he don't know this random woman. He does not know her. If him and his ex share custody and the new wife has only been in, living with them for 10 months, that means on average five months, this baby has been around this woman. He don't fucking know her yet. Your brother admitted that himself. He don't fucking know her. So why would he just admit that this woman is his bonus mom, is his family when he knows nothing about her? Stepmom could be the sweetest, gentlest, most caring soul in the world, which I highly doubt she is. But that does not mean this child has to immediately accept her as his bonus mom. His mother is alive and well and active in his life. He spends half of his time with his fucking mother. Just because you get married does not mean your children have to automatically, immediately accept this stranger as a fucking parental figure in their life. No, absolutely not. You are not the asshole. You did not say anything negative or anything disrespectful or harmful to your brother. He came to you to vent and then ended up getting information back that he thought was going to confirm how he felt. But just to find out, you feel the exact fucking opposite. He thought you were going to be on his side just to get smacked with fucking reality. Like, bro, you need to wake the fuck up and stop being a poo butt. Stop being a poo butt and trying to blame your ex on everything. This is you. This is your actions. You're the one that's doing this. You and only you can fucking fix it.
I seen a comment. Someone said that um, the brother sounds like the asshole and that they were betting that he is blaming his ex for their marriage ending. And OP made a response to it. She said, I've never heard him blame her for the divorce, but he blames her for their son not being more excited and into his wife. He believes she should be encouraging their son to call my sister-in-law mom or mama. He believes any distances has to be all from the ex and couldn't be due to anything else, including how quickly they moved in their relationship. Eight months of knowing each other before they got to mar got married. These people literally have only known each other for 18 months. That's it. 18 months. They knew each other eight months before they got married and then she moved in and the following 10 months. That's it. And he is upset that his son, his seven-year-old, is not welcoming this random that he don't know shit about with open arms. Are you fucking kidding me? Your brother is absolutely the asshole. Am I wrong for cutting up and altering my dress instead of giving it to my sister who can't afford an expensive one? Okay, I need an unbiased opinion. So I was supposed to get married two months ago to my ex-partner of five years. Sadly, we broke it off because he cheated on me at his bachelor party and yes he anyways i had this beautiful dress that cost me two thousand dollars this came out of my own pocket now i had been very depressed since everything happened because i felt like it had somehow been my fault so last weekend i decided to take my power back so I began altering the dress. I've been sewing for more than 15 years, so I know what I'm doing. I cut it a bit and changed the color to something less wedding-y. And after a week of working on it, I finally had a beautiful gown that I could use more than once. Now comes the problem. I uploaded a picture of the dress to Instagram with the caption that said something along the lines of, you can change the worst memories or some shit like that my sister hits me up and asks if that's my old wedding dress and i told her yes she then called me and asked why i had done this i asked her why it was such a big deal she told me that i could have at least waited until after her wedding i was so confused then she reminded me that when we were staying at the hotel where my wedding was supposed to happen, my mom and my sister were there cheering me up. And she said something along the lines of, Oh well, if you're not using it, I will. We all laughed, so I assumed it was a joke. Because it was never brought up again after that. She asked me once what material it was, so I just assumed she wanted something similar. And now my sister's mad at me. My mom says she understands both of our points of view but that I could have at least waited five more months until after her wedding to take my power back. So was I wrong? Bye. My cousin just recently confessed to me that she is in love with my husband and she's literally living with us, so I don't know how to act. My cousin and her toddler have been living with me and my husband for about four months now too try to save up for her own place. Yesterday while my husband was out doing some errands, she asked me if we could chat. I thought that she was going to ask me if she could stay at her house for a little bit longer. The original plan was six months, but instead she gave me this long drawn out speech about how she's in love with my husband. She kept going on and on saying that she tried to make the feelings go away, but she just couldn't and she thinks that he is her soulmate. She says that her feelings just keep growing stronger and stronger no matter how much she tries to push them down. And she kept on apologizing and apologizing after everything she would say but just keep getting crazier with the things that she was saying. She was saying that every time she sees my husband with her son, she knows that her family is complete and that he could offer her the stability that they need. My cousin just recently confessed to me that she is in love with my husband and she's literally living with us so i don't know how to act she was saying that every time she sees my husband with her son she knows that her family is complete and that he could offer her the stability that they need excuse me i was honestly just so shocked and dumbfounded that i just said i need time to process this ever since that conversation i have been avoiding her 
like crazy but my husband has been holed up in his office because he has a lot of work to do so he hasn't really noticed anything off yet but i think i'm still reeling from the shock to be honest with you the worst part is that i can't even ask her to move out because her family completely disowned her when she had a baby out of wedlock i haven't told anyone close to me yet because i just know that everyone is gonna say that i need to kick her out but i can't make my nephew homeless Oh, and to just add to the craziness a little bit, she also said that she has had these feelings for about four years now. She just could not hold them in anymore, so she had to tell me. No, thank you. I would have rather not know. I mean, I actually have no idea where to go from here. Like, what do I do? What do I do? I'm stuck. Am I the asshole for excluding my, quote, adopted sister from family photos at my wedding? I, 26 female, and my adopted sister, Allie, is 14 female. The way we're related is that my younger brother, Michael, 24 male, has been with his wife, Maya, 24 female, since their freshman year of high school. Maya and Allie are sisters and had a really bad home life. And my mom is very much a, my home is open to everyone type of person. So over that year, Maya began spending more and more time at our house, eventually bringing Allie over as well since she was always babysitting. By the time Michael and Maya were 16 years old, Maya basically lived in the guest room and Allie spent after school, most weekends, holidays, and summer vacations at our house. My mom and dad say they love both Maya and Allie like their own children. My other siblings, 18 male and 16 female, also treat her like she's part of the family. Even after Maya and Michael moved out, Allie is still at their house the same amount, if not more than she was before. Now to preface, I have nothing against Allie. She's a good kid and I make an effort to be nice to her. However, I've never really liked how she was foistered into our lives. She's not actually adopted and she still has parents and her own family, yet my parents spend so much time and resources on her. It's ridiculous. Everyone else has started unironically calling her their daughter or sister and I've refused. I just don't consider her to be part of the family. Anyways, I got married recently, which is where the issues start. I invited Allie to the wedding, of course, and she came with all of her other family. When we were doing pictures of the wedding parties, I decided that I wanted one of my immediate family. My parents, siblings, Maya, and Maya and my brother Michael's daughter. My mom brought Allie up to come take the pictures with us and I was forced to tell her no. My mom started to get upset, but then Allie said it was okay and sat down by herself. My mom isn't a very confrontational person, so she didn't make a big deal of it, but then every Everyone else realized that Allie wasn't there and they got mad as well. Ultimately, we took the photos how I wanted it because they, quote, didn't want to do this at my wedding. But my entire family is pissed at me now. My mom said that Allie cried when she got home because I didn't love her, which I don't. I feel like they forced me into a position where I had to do an asshole thing by forcing this kid onto me. I don't think I should have to consider her family if I don't want to. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Story time about my toxic ex-best friend. So a little background information. I had a very close guy friend who we're gonna call Max. Now, Max was two years older than me, but due to our families being super close, him and I became best friends. Growing up, I saw him as kind of an older brother. And then eventually as we grew up, I saw him as my best friend. Until I realized that he was actually a terrible person. And I missed all of the signs that he was not a real friend. Like one, our first fight, I told him something that I didn't want anybody else knowing. And what do you know, right after I tell him, my family knows, his family knows, my crush knows, all of our friends know. Um, after this, I probably should have distanced myself, but he apologized and we became friends again. That was sign number one. Sign number two, his huge change in attitude. One second, he would be extremely rude to me. And then he would be this really sweet and caring guy. And his apologies were the best. So it was really hard not to forgive him. He was like a master manipulator. Number three, we only talked whenever it was convenient for him. Like seriously, we would never talk unless he needed something like for part two. Part two about my toxic ex-best friend. I think we left off on sign number three, which was the only time that we would talk was when it was convenient for him. He would never reach out, which left me being the one who was constantly trying to preserve our friendship or whatever was left of it. Like all of our messages were literally me and it made me seem really needy. And like I was putting in way too much effort because he would literally answer with the most simple messages. Know. Like, yeah, okay, sure. And he would only talk to me whenever he wasn't with his friends. Sign number four. It felt like he was embarrassed of me. Now, I know that I was two years younger than him, but we were still friends, and I really don't think that's that much of a difference. Like, he would never want to be seen with me. The last 
sign, he would literally always talk about me behind my back. And I thought this was just rumors at first, until finally several people told me that it was not a rumor. He would say things like, oh, she's ugly, she's so immature, she's annoying and childish, she's so annoying. And then I finally decided to cut him off. Because if the bad outweighed the good, was it really worth keeping that person in my life? We have an update one year later. Since the marriage a year ago, I've made it a point to talk to my sister regularly on the phone that I gave her. After a few weeks in, her husband started pushing her to be in a traditional wife role, which created a wedge between her and her friends. But I made sure to keep in touch and to visit her once every month. Her husband did not like that, but he tolerated it to keep up appearances. To deal with my frustrations, I joined a gym and started working out. Luckily, my boss at my job turned out to be a great lady who listened to me and gave me a lot of support and advice. She told me I could call her when I needed help and became my mentor and an older sister I could lean on while also paying me well. Some months into the marriage, her husband managed to domesticate her completely. She stopped going out almost entirely and had very little independence. He tried to start separating my sister from me. However, because I kept a good and consistent relationship with her, he wasn't able to do it. A couple of months ago, he started hinting to my sister about wanting kids. But I kept repeating to my sister that she should not have children until a few years into the marriage. Last month, he told her directly that he wanted children and my sister told him that she wanted to wait. He started pressuring her to get her contraceptive implant removed, so last week I went back home to talk to him. I always try to be polite to him whenever I visit their home so that he doesn't have any ammo to try and separate us. During the conversation, I brought up that he was pressuring my sister to get her contraceptive implant removed. It escalated into an argument with him saying that he had a right to have children with his wife. When I didn't back down, he got frustrated and took a swing at me, which didn't connect properly. Beat his ass! Beat his ass! The moment you swing... <laughs> Gloves are off. I didn't hesitate in punching him back in the face. He fell backwards and started howling in pain. I wanted to do that since this whole ordeal started and it was satisfying. I think him hitting me was my sister's wake-up call. He called the cops and told them that I assaulted him. Fortunately, I made sure to record everything whenever I visit their home. I use my Apple Watch for this and it's a great tool for selfie audio recording. I called my boss and told her about what happened and she promised to send a lawyer just in case. When the cops arrived, my sister took my side, which surprised her husband. With me being a woman and with the recording, the cops also took my side. The lawyer arrived after that and I told her husband that I was taking my sister with me. He tried to protest, but the lawyer warned him that I would press charges if he stopped my sister from leaving. He reluctantly let her go, and she has been staying with me for the last week. My parents were furious that they found out my little sister left her husband. They did not seem to care that he hit me, probably because I stopped talking to them. I'm still talking to my sister about what she wants to do and will probably start divorce proceedings in a few days. Her husband and my parents have been trying to call and get her to come back, but I've made sure that she doesn't talk to them without me present. Throughout the whole thing, my boss has been super helpful and has been giving my sister advice about what she could do next. I know that I'm super lucky that my sister managed to wake up so soon and that I've had support from people like my boss. Throughout the whole of last year, I was worried about how my sister was going to end up, but I am elated now. Hell yeah! My wife doesn't want to dismantle the shrine to our dead son. How can I convince her it's for the best? Seven years ago, our 39 male and 34 female son Bobby was born stillborn. My wife and I were devastated. We decorated his bedroom in our small three bedroom home. His bedroom contains a teddy bear with his ashes. To this day, my wife goes into the room and rocks the bear. We both went to grief counseling and she was advised that her behavior is perfectly acceptable. I guess I wouldn't have a problem if we didn't have other children. Two girls, 10 and nine who were little when they lost our little brother and one other girl that was born five years ago. All three are crammed into the smallest room in the house about 90 square feet. Bobby's room is big, about 200 square feet, because it used to be the master. Before we bought the house, the previous owners added an, added an addition to the house, and that's where my wife and I sleep. My girls have been asking for Bobby's room. I talked to my wife about moving his shrine to a smaller closet area in the house. My wife became angry. She claimed that I didn't love Bobby. That's, um, no ma'am, no ma'am. No, ma'am. So what about your other three children? I don't love Bobby because I want to take his shrine and put it in a smaller area. That way, the three children that we have are not crammed up in a 90 square foot room when there is a 200 square foot room that is not being used by anybody. That means I do not love my dearly departed son. That's fucked up, ma'am. Your wife needs better um, therapy. She needs to go back to fucking therapy because clearly after seven years, if she feels like having all three of her daughters, one of them who is 10 years old, crammed into one room, she's she is not grieving correctly. 
Not at all. My wife claimed that I didn't love Bobby, which is very far from the truth. It's just that my girls are growing up and they need the space. They aren't even allowed in Bobby's room to use the bathroom that's in it or to play with the toys that are in there. We've been to family therapy recently and I was told by the therapist that my wife is a grieving mother and I would be playing a deadly game to get between a mama bear and her cub. You need a new therapist because your therapist is encouraging your wife to keep a 200 square foot bedroom completely empty that her children are not allowed to go into. They can't play the toys that are play with the toys that are in there while also being crammed in a 90 square foot room. Three children. You need a new therapist because that's not OK. That is not OK. Your therapist is, is supposed to be helping your wife process this. That way she can move on and not have these blowouts whenever someone says something about a situation that she doesn't like that has to do with Bobby. Like your therapist is not doing their job. It seems as if anyone that I talk to takes my wife's side. And honestly, if it weren't for my girls, I wouldn't care. Should I keep pushing the issue with my wife? Should I let it go? It's possible to move the girls to the basement. It's unfinished, but maybe I can spruce it up. It's just, they're still pretty young and I don't want them that far away from me. That's exactly what I was going to say. You going to put your five-year-old in the fucking basement? Uh, no. Your nine-year-old, your 10-year-old in the basement? No, no, no. Why we can't move Bobby's little shrine situation down to the basement? That way you don't have to worry about nobody accidentally going in there, nobody getting in trouble for going in there. The girls now have space to spread out and Bobby's stuff is away from everybody, but yet still in a place where you can still go down there and spend time with him if you want. I think that's a perfectly fine compromise. We could put the girls in the basement. It's not finished, but maybe I can spruce it up. It's just that they're really still young and I don't want them that far away from me. And to get to the basement, you have to leave the house and enter through the garage. I just need some advice. Once again, she's in therapy. I truly, really think your wife needs a better therapist, another therapist, a different therapist, because there's no way in hell it's been seven years, seven years, and she is still blowing up like this. Seven years. I'm not saying that grieving has any type of timeline. I'm just simply stating the fact that you would rather cater to your child that was born, stillborn seven years ago over the three children that you have that are still living, healthy, breathing with you. You've got these three babies crammed into one room so that Bobby can have the biggest room in the fucking house. But that makes no sense. It makes no sense. Your wife is still grieving. Yes, I agree with her therapist, but she is not getting the help that she needs. She's not because after seven years, she's not thinking clearly. She is not thinking clearly. She has not once spared a thought for your three girls. You told her the girls are crammed up in one room and maybe we should move Bobby's stuff to a smaller closeted area. That way you can still have this. You can still have this. She blows up and accuses you of not loving your son. What about your daughters, ma'am? Do you not love your daughters? You don't care that your 10, 9, and 5-year-old are crammed in one room? Do they have any room to play in there? Because in my mind, I'm thinking of a toddler bed and bunk beds. And I feel like in 90 square feet, that's not a lot of space left for these babies to play. Because the office that I'm in right now is not that big. And if I had bunk beds on one wall and a taller bed on another, there would be very limited space because they need dressers. They need all types of other shit. Like there's no room for these babies to grow and enjoy their time in their bedroom. And you don't fucking care about that because Bobby has to have his room. Why can't we switch it? Why can't we flip flop? Like there's so many other ways to compromise with this. And instead of your wife thinking cognitively to come up with a compromise, she just went straight off the deep end. You do not love our son because you want to move his shrine. We didn't say that we were going to take it down and never, ever, ever look or think of Bobby ever again, because that's not the case here. We want to move it. That way our children can have some space to spread out because they're getting older. No, your wife truly needs to go to a different therapist because she's not getting the help that she really needs. Am I the asshole for ruining Thanksgiving? I, 30 female, met my boyfriend, 30 male, three years ago. Before me, he was together with his high school sweetheart. They fell out of love and broke up. A year later, we started dating. His mom, however, was still heartbroken about it. I was very understanding and thought she needed time to get to know me. The ex basically grew up with them and they saw her as a part of the family. For the first year of my relationship, his mom would call me 
his ex's name until boyfriend got angry once and told her to be nice. She laughed it off and said it was just a habit. After that, she started calling me the wrong name. So think Janet instead of Jenny. I corrected her a couple of times, but she seemed to like hurting me, so I ignored it later. My boyfriend has two sisters and a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving, we were invited to a barbecue at the older sister's house. I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend's mom, the sisters, and one of their husbands. The older sister then started talking about how my boyfriend praised my cooking to her husband and the mom was listening. She then said out loud, sure, why don't we let Janet, wrong name, make the turkey this year. The sisters giggled and looked at each other and said that's a great idea. I didn't tell my boyfriend what happened. On Thanksgiving, we went to his mom's house with the usual wine and dessert. She was shocked. Everyone was shocked. I said, what? I thought Janet is bringing the turkey. There was yelling, crying, and then we got kicked out. My boyfriend is so angry with me, he hasn't talked to me since. I think it's over, to be honest, but I still don't think I did anything wrong. Am I the asshole? That is so fucking great. I fucking love everything about that. My twin sister and I took a genetic test and it turns out that we don't share any DNA and my family won't tell me why. My twin and I are fraternal twins and recently we decided to take a genetic test just to see like what we shared and what were different about us. Since we still share genes, fraternal twins are like genetically siblings. My grandparents actually suggested that we do the tests and they bought them for us so our parents didn't even know about them. Our results literally made no sense at all. My twins was coming up as Western Europe and Eastern Europe, which makes sense because most of my family are Croatian, German, and Austrian. So all that would be accurate, but mine was literally nothing like that. Mine was either Scandinavian or Russian and a few other places too. Neither of those were on my twins result at all. She had like the tiniest percentage of Scandinavian, but that's it. And we shared absolutely no DNA, which clearly stood out to us and seemed impossible because we're literal fraternal twins. Like we have to share DNA. My twin was pretty sure they just probably mixed up the sample. So we contacted the company and my twin ended up taking a test again. My twin sister and I took a genetic test and it turns out that we don't share any DNA and my family won't tell me why. And guess what? It was the same exact result as before and we were both really confused. We told our grandparents and all they said is that's really interesting, but they didn't say anything more, like no explanation. So we decided to tell our parents because we just wanted to see if maybe they had taken genetic tests before or anything. When we told our mom, it was pretty much the same reaction as my grandparents. She just kind of seemed annoyed about it. She basically just said they're inaccurate anyways and our grandparents shouldn't have told us to take one. When we asked our dad about it, he basically said absolutely nothing. I'm just so confused and my twin thinks it's a mistake, but I just really don't think so because we're for twins so we have to share at least 50% of our DNA. If these results are right we basically are just not related at all because even if my mom had cheated on my dad we would still have the same father so we would still share some amount of DNA. I'm just not really sure why my parents would adopt a baby that is the same exact age as my sister. Like I might just not even be related to her at all. I did end up calling the clinic, but they said that the day of my birthday, they only had record of my mom giving birth to one child, not two. I pretended to have a vasectomy. Two years later, my wife is pregnant. I am going through a horrible dilemma and I'm so deep in, I have no idea what to do. My wife and I have been married for nine years and we have two kids together and we aren't planning on having any more. Well, my wife is set on that idea, but I wanted to have at least five kids and she only wanted to have one or none. This doesn't take away from the fact that she is a great mother. It's just her preference. Going into the marriage, we sort of compromised to have maybe two or three kids. I'm set on having three, but she didn't want any more. It's been five years since having the first two, and around two years ago, she was hell-bent on me getting a vasectomy. I wasn't comfortable with it and refused, but it became the center of our arguments. We dated for five years before getting married, so we have been together for a total of 12 years when this occurred. Now we've been together for 14 years. These were such lovely times, and I didn't want to end our relationship on this, especially since we have kids 
kids together. So I agreed to the vasectomy after months of arguing. Fast forward to now, my wife is pregnant. She doesn't know how this could have happened, but I do. I never got the vasectomy. Two years ago, I pretended that I got it and I told her someone else took me to the appointment. I took off a week of work so I could recover from it. I try to be cautious while sleeping with my wife, but it obviously didn't work. Now my wife is furious as I told her that the vasectomy could have failed rather than telling her the truth. She's also scheduling appointments with lawyers so she can sue the practice in which I received the surgery. However, if they have the records, it will prove that I never got it. Now my wife is also thinking about having an abortion, but I'm trying to convince her to drop this whole thing and if anything, this child is a miracle. What should I do now? I'm worried if I tell her the truth that she will leave me. I don't want to lose her. She's the love of my life. I know that this is my fault, but please help me on how I should go about this.